Church, let's pray for our message this morning. God, we ask that you speak to us now, to our hearts and to our minds, to continue the work in shaping us and forming us and making us the disciples that you've created us to be. We ask uh, for direction as we go with you on this journey to the cross during Lent. Amen. Church, I had several proud pastor moments this last week. Uh, this was another hard week, week of frozen ice and snow and uh, being locked in the house for yet another week. Uh, I'm so thankful to see you be neighbors to each other. Last week we talked about uh, loving God and loving neighbors, and we did that. Um, you reached out to help uh, serve uh, help provide uh, water and food and things that you need for neighbors that didn't have electricity, that, that needed propane, that needed different things, and uh, so thank you. Uh, even to those of you that messaged the church and, and said, what, what can we do? What should we be doing? And uh, sometimes that thing we need to do is just simply to be at our house and stay off the roads. Um, that's where we are today. Uh, today is Thursday, Thursday afternoon as I record this. Uh, but just hear a word of thanks from me. I appreciate the way that you show your compassion to each other and show it in your community. Keep it up. Um, this last week, as we were in our kind of one week of hard, frozen quarantine, we got our game boards out. Uh, we got the games out in the family. And uh, we turned to a game that we don't usually turn to. It was sitting there on the table, and Tracy said, what do you want to play? And I looked at it, and I said, you know... I want to play Monopoly. And she turned to me and she said, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure you want to play Monopoly? Um, and Pax gets fired up about Monopoly. And uh, so we, we were going to play this. And uh, you know why we struggle to play Monopoly, because it takes so long to play Monopoly. When you get into a game of Monopoly, it is not 20 minutes and let's go do something else. It is going to be days, isn't it? And the table is set up and you take a break. You let it sit there all day long. You come back to it. It took us three days to get through this game of Monopoly. Very quickly into the game, we realized that Beckett was destroying us. Um, I had three properties. You don't win Monopoly if you have three properties. Uh, Beckett was getting all the properties. He had them all. And his money was piling up. And there were many moments where we all looked at each other and said, well, are we done? Should we just stop? Because uh, I think uh, we can just kind of skip the end. Let's just skip this and, and move on to something else. And we could tell that Beckett wanted to finish this game. Um, it's going really slowly. And I was trying as the financial advisor to my younger son, um, let's, let's get some houses on the board. You've got all the properties. Let's buy some houses, let's get some hotels out there, let's start winning this game and move this thing along, let's hurry up, let's skip this a little bit. And um, it got there slowly, but uh, kudos to all of you who play the whole game of Monopoly all the way out and don't skip it. Uh, today we are beginning our first Sunday in the season of Lent. Our theme this year is Journey to the Cross journey to the cross. We're going to begin today looking at Mark 1. And in Mark 1, we see the baptism of Jesus, and then we see the temptation of Jesus. That is usually the first Sunday of Lent. We look at this temptation of Jesus, when the Spirit forced Jesus into the wilderness. It's interesting that it says forced, isn't it? Um, it wasn't necessarily something that was willingly done. It was not something Jesus wanted to do. There's something about being put out and being driven out with that word forced into the wilderness. Uh, wilderness isn't just the woods. Uh, wilderness is a place of isolation. Uh, it's probably like the desert, a rocky desert where Jesus would have gone through hunger and danger. It says there were wild animals there. Um, Jesus would not have had electricity for many days. The Spirit forced Jesus into the wilderness. This was a time of focus for Jesus, for focus and preparation of joining together 
with his mission to save the world, of Jesus kind of living into and becoming his mission to save the world. Now, here in Mark, we get the short version. Mark is real quick about the baptism and the temptation. He wants to get on, uh, I guess, to other things. Um, but this time of temptation was a preparing for the journey ahead and the story ahead that Mark would tell and Jesus would live. Preparing for a long, hard journey where there would be years of resistance, of struggle, of teachings, of an arrest, of death, of resurrection. A long journey awaited him and Satan tempts him. And Satan says, are you sure? Are you sure? Wouldn't you just want to skip all of that and find a quick win with me? Satan was offering power. Satan was offering power to skip this hard journey and to find a workaround so that he could find a quick win. But Jesus knew and he focused on a victory that wouldn't be found in power or a workaround but would be found in a place, and his focus was in a place, without power. He was in the wilderness. A place where, where he needed to be was in a place of powerlessness, of depending on the angels and depending on others for help and assistance and focusing on his mission to save us and spend time in that powerless place. Lent is a time for us to ask ourselves, do we try to get out of that journey? Do we try to get out of our journey ahead of us? Do we, uh, you know, I, we get into trouble when we try to skip the journey. When we try to skip the journey ahead and the work ahead, the things that you and I need to do, Maybe we try to find a, a cheat code, all right? I grew up in the, the time of the games where you, you wanted to find a cheat code. You wanted to speed the game up. You wanted to finish this. Let's get this out of the way so we can get to the end and find the win. But where God wants us, where God wants us is on the journey and in this journey. And in the same way that Jesus did out in the wilderness for us to connect to the powerlessness of ourselves, the powerlessness of ourselves, to join on the journey of the things of life, of forgiveness and of pain. There are pains in the world and be drawn to the reality of life. And in this, we're all drawn to each other in the sense of powerlessness. Um, this is a place where we, we just say this is, this is hard at times. This journey is long. It's difficult. It's not a journey where we can blame others for the hard things in our life. And there's always someone to blame, but as part of the journey, part of the Lenten journey, part of our life journey is not finding a cheat code away from things, but knowing that we're in the reality of where we are. The journey to the cross, this journey towards the cross that you and I are on and we go through here again in Lent is a, is a journey towards family. It's a journey towards others. It's a journey towards the body of Christ. It's a journey towards neighbor. It's a journey towards other. Not our own power, not our individual power, but actually our powerlessness and knowing that we need others. We need angels around us to help us. It's a draw towards family. It's a draw towards something bigger than ourselves. The opposite of that is the draw towards being individuals, which is a temptation to be drawn away from the body, from being drawn away from others and from neighbors and the body of Christ. It's a journey of ego being drawn away in individual. It's a journey of ego, of individual, of power, of the temptation of Satan saying, you can make something great for yourself and we can do it quickly. We can find a workaround. Kind of reminds me of this week that's been so cold and 
Many of us have been on social media saying we should just go to Florida. Let's just get in the car and just head that way to the beach. Um, I spent a couple days dreaming about summer vacation, maybe even going uh, to Florida. Lent is a time for the journey to the cross. And friends, there's no work around. There's no skip ahead. There's no cheat code here. Just as Jesus needed to be in his powerlessness to connect to his mission of serving and giving himself for others, that's our work too, here in our journey to the cross. So the first step in the journey to the cross is to consider the temptation. The temptation that Jesus had to skip it all, to receive his power from somewhere else, from Satan, to receive the quick victory. But friends, we're here in worship today because Jesus didn't choose power. Jesus chose love. Jesus chose love instead. And then for us, the second step is to see our place in finding strength and purpose, our strength and our purpose we find in God and not in ourselves. Not in our own power, not in our political power, not in our financial power, not in the things that I do, but finding myself in a place of powerlessness where I have to receive my help from the angels. I have to receive, I know my power then is in, is in God. That's the work of faith. That's the work of humbling ourselves, of being a servant. Several scriptures about this. I wanted to share three with you real quickly. First Chronicles 16, 11 says, Look to the Lord and his strength. Look to the Lord and his strength. Second Thessalonians 3, 3 says, But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. The Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and he will protect you. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I've got about uh, 70 participants in the community groups uh, during winter this time uh, that have been doing some hard work. They've been doing the hard work of looking at maturity, which is found in this powerlessness. A maturity, the second half of life that you find when you realize that you can't control others. Sometimes you're in a situation that you can't control. That was a lot of us this last week. And finally, you can't control God. Of finding that your only true victory is to journey with the one who loves you. I stumbled upon a a quote this week from A.W. Tozer. It says, Only by full dependence upon God are the hidden potentialities of our natures realized. Here, I stumbled over that. Let's try it again. Only by full dependence upon God are the hidden potentialities of our natures realized. The place we want to find ourselves, the journey, the place, the goal that we're trying to find is a maturity that says, I depend wholly on God. And it's from that place that we do find our power. And it's from that place that we find our strength. It's from that place we find our calling and our voice as a church and as a congregation so that we can do what Jesus did in the third step of their scripture today in Mark 1. There was the baptism, the temptation, and then the proclamation, where Jesus, from that place of powerlessness, from that place of knowing his full mission and connecting, he comes out and says, now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and your lives and trust this good news. Friends, change your hearts and your lives and trust one thing, this good news. Friends, during this season of Lent, may you be led by the Spirit, the same Spirit that took Jesus out into the wilderness. 
may you be led by that spirit as we journey together towards the cross, as we see our power comes only from being connected with God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.